Can you force to one change would not be wide, but have you rethought your lineup because of the opponent in Essen? Oh no, not so much uh, because of the opponent, but yeah, we'll we'll make some up. Couple of adjustments and um, and go from there. Miss George also plays first game back, which is a great story for us as a footy club after his ACL. So we're pretty excited to see Mitch get out there and play on um, uh, tomorrow night. Dealing with the rucks, do you stick with the one specialist ruck? Yeah, we'll go. Through, well, we'll go through all that, but yes, we'll, we'll stick with the one ruck and and play the way we've been playing. So that means you go with three tall forwards in addition to the ruck. Then? Sorry. Does that mean you go with three tall forwards in addition to the ruck? Three tall forwards, yes. Yards, yeah. No, we'll go. Uh, well, what do you call Mitch? You call Mitch Tall, or yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we'll have four then. <laughs> Jeremy, for your most curious place in the side. Yes. Yeah. Just, um, to, just on Mitch. You look gas in the last half at over the other time. He obviously pulled up and came and showed enough. Mitch, yeah, I think the whole team was probably, by the end of the game, was up against it and a pretty significant challenge down at Glenelg. So, uh, Mitch has, you know, he's played pretty well for the last two or three weeks. To be fair to him, and. Um, it's never going to be the absolute perfect time. Um, we're excited by what he's going to bring to our team, though. What does he add to his side when he's up? Oh, you've only got to look at his, his history and his form. It's it's pretty hard work for opposition to do, to stop. He's he's a great athlete, not just a great aerial athlete. He's a great athlete on the ground too. So we think he can. Um, we're really hopeful that he adds to our speed on the ground. Wines is, is out there doing some. You confidence only one week. Um, one week hamstrings, hamstrings, yeah, yeah, yeah hamstrings. It, Yes, I am confident it's only one week, but if I get back here next week, you won't come back and tell me I was confident last week. Normally, a strain is more because it did say strain in the Yeah, he played game. the second half of the game with the same issue last week, so you didn't see any weakness in that. But because we um, we have some evidence through scans and stuff that we, we just got to be a bit cautious. It's a six day break. You know, we go into another quick game next week, pretty much, and you know, we, we're optimistic Ollie will be fine. Look, honestly, if it was Sunday, I think he'd be playing. I know that sounds a bit ridiculous, but that's that's fact. How much work have you been able to put in for all the agenda items that came out of the game against Melbourne? We weren't short of things to review. Um, no, there was a lot of positives that came out of the game against Melbourne that we we did really really well, and yeah, there was some there was some things that every team and every club we always review after every game that, that you, you look for RFIs as we call them time ruined when proof. So um, we've certainly looked at a few of them. Melbourne, to their credit, played a really good game. They they executed really well in front of goal. I think ultimately that was the most significant stat in the game. They they kicked goals. So, so what do you think you need to work on more defending so you don't concede as much or? Was it's pretty hard. To, it's pretty hard. Yeah, it's pretty hard to stop a team if they're going to kick goals like they kick sometimes in the positions we put them. We put them in really good spots to take um, take um, shots on goal that were less likely than likely to be goals, but they turned them into goals. Is there a sense that you kind of let, left one out there, given you know, you're so dominant? You know, when you kind of review it. Um, yeah, I think I think we felt as if we could have won the game, but this game makes you win the scoreboard battle more than any other battle, so um, we didn't win it. So, you know, we, we'll reflect back um, over the course of the season and there'll be games that we, that we win that we shouldn't have won perhaps and there's games that we, that we maybe lost that we thought we could have won, but we probably think that most weeks. What do you expect from the new Essendon and the supposed Essendon edge? <coughs> oh, no, I think they're, they're, Brad's been coaching them now for a little while, so I think we expect um, Essendon to, to play in the same fashion that they have done over the last couple of years. and. They'll be a real challenge, and they have been all the way through this year already for every team that's played against them. Um, you know, they've got a high-quality side that, that, that we rate. I'm sure they rate themselves, so we'll, it'll be a real challenge. Last year we played them in two games that were really, really close games of footy. And, but I think if you face that every week at this level. You, you don't face any week where you go in there thinking this will be a, an easy game. It just won't be. So you haven't seen any extra edge? given it's been talked about a bit more this season? I see competitive players at every team playing competitive football every week and you know um, we all expect our players to have um, great energy and effort to get after the opposition. I think that's what they expect. What does Jason on Francis have to do? Does he have to tick any more boxes to, to be picked? No, he'll play, but as long as he gets through without doing anything silly between now and, and game time, he'll, he'll be playing. Oh. Is it a crucial time for him to come back when Holly goes out and an extra ball in the um, not about crucial time, but it's always a good time when you bring in good players. So that's that's really important for us. And um, you know, he's a very much a you know developing young mid who's got top end talent, but he'll certainly help. You speak about development. Was it only a year ago you had that sort of iconic moment with him out in the rain, Western Bulldogs? Think back to there. Do you, do you look at it? I know fans love that shot. And where is he from there to now? Because he's obviously 
developing uh, player. Yeah, he's just a young, a young man on his journey, and um, you know, so we're so happy to have him here for a start. But secondly, I'm so proud of the way he goes about his, his uh, want to improve. You know, he's really, really keen to be a great player in the competition, and uh, but more importantly, he's really keen to be a great player at Port Adelaide. And yeah, you know, he's he's got so much stuff to look forward to for everyone that barracks for Port Adelaide. There's a there's a 10-year catalogue coming, I reckon. What about as a person? I mean, he seems like he's grown up a lot, <coughs> had to grow up a lot over the last 12 months, 18 months, kind of thing. Young people grow up. It's exactly what they do. They mature and they mature in all, all facets of life, not just in football. Yeah, what, what, did did you you this week? what did you emphasise this week? What did you emphasise this week? Playing the way we have to play, playing our way, and it's it's pretty clear to us the way we play. We've got you know a, a really good identity about how we play our footy, and and to execute that for for four quarters if possible, but to make sure we come away with a win. It's it's not that different to any other week, to be honest. We we want to win clearly, and we know how we play our best. How do you respond to Chris Scott taking note that Gather Round's given you the 13th game at Adelaide Oval, and it should be a showdown, so you don't have home field advantage? I don't know. That's. Chris's opinion, I suppose. He can have his opinion. I think Gather Round's in a great spot. I think it's in the right town. It's fantastic. It's If someone can do it better than what last year was, it'll probably be Adelaide this year because we're doing it pretty good already from what I can see. Um, you know, without tit for tat, it's like MCG has the grand final every year. Mm. Can I ask about Mitch Georgiades and, and the recovery? Can you just give us some insight into the work that he's put in and also so long out of football <coughs> has he worked on elements of his game? Will he come back at different, better player? Yeah, well, hopefully, but he's going as a young, a young player. We expect him to continue to get better, but he's had time to get better and focus on certain areas of his game that will help him be more effective as an AFL player. And, you know, he had a really significant knee injury that, that early days after surgery was he was struggling to overcome, but it took him a little while to get going. But since then, he's been quite rapid in his... Um, his recovery, and um, you know, we've we've enjoyed the way he's trained through the preseason in a different style. We, you know, Mitch has pretty much been almost the goal square forward lead up at the ball, whereas now we think you know he's he's growing his game to be able to play more a half forward flank or a true half forward flanker type position. If you go back to the old days when they're half forward flankers, um, what do you have to do around the goal kicking? Given I guess that's something with fans have been kind of saying, you know, what's going on there given the start of the season? Kick accurately. <laughs> But is it as simple as that? We've spent, look, everyone knows, and it's been reported, we've spent a lot of time on our goal kicking. Um, sometimes in, in everything you do, it, it takes a little while to transfer. There'll be games that we kick really well, I'm sure. Um, I hope there's not very many games that we don't kick very well, but we, we, we can't spend any more time on them. We spend an incredible amount of time. Our players, good on them, they spend an enormous amount of time making sure they've got everything in, in place, but they still have to execute. Which is, which is more pressing there, that, that goal kicking accuracy or getting more goal kicking opportunities? Because if you're we're getting plenty of opportunities. Yeah. We're getting inside like 50 numbers. But yeah, we, get, we, we always, we're, we're that side, that's the way we play our football. We, you know, if you hold the ball in your front half a bit, let's be honest, the reality of those entries are going to be a bit messier than mm. the ones that you, you just charge into your forward 50. Okay. That's just fact. Are you still working with the expert or same experts that help develop the goal kicking? Chad's still running our program. <laughs> yep. you know, I'd like to call him an expert too, so that's good. He'll be happy with that. And Kenny, okay, you're a big club, so you got a lot of rivals, Crows. Norwood might want to join the party. Would you, what do you think about that? Um, well, yeah, I, it caught me a little bit by surprise too last night. But I think that, I mean, look, competition's expanding. I'm not going to put a, on a, a ceiling on who should and who shouldn't be in the competition. Um, all I know is that Port Adelaide should be. You spoke last week about how excited you were to have Jed McAdee back in the side and he showed the couple goals and that pressure. Is that is that an example to the side, the way he comes in and you want the rest of that forward line to be playing like that? No, it's just, a, again, it's a player understanding his role and he knows what he brings to the team and he does it as best he possibly can. But everyone, everyone's you know, got roles to play and they all have slightly different roles. You know, Some of the backs are different to our forwards and some of our mids are different, but Jed understands what he brings to the team. You touch on gather round being perfect for Adelaide. Do you think, you know, we've got a couple of years on, on this contract, but do you think long term that this should always be the home for, for gather round? Well, it's, well you, what you look at is you look at results and the results would say that it's going to be hard to be better than Adelaide. So leave that to the AFL to make the decision clearly, but um, the Premier's doing a good job. I think he can make sure that we keep it. Did you catch Kane Gore and some things like last night? I didn't, but Nathan Brown caught him a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> you think he wore it well? I didn't think he wore it that well, if I'm being honest. I thought he was in a bit of trouble for a little bit, but um, good on him. I mean, it was, again, part of the gather round and part of, part of the build-up. It, it did bring a little bit of something to it. I mean, there's not, a, there's not many people out there that weren't, wasn't happy to see Kane in the ring.
and there wasn't many people out there not happy to see Kane cop a couple. <laughs>